Quiet Dialogue Between a Muslim and a Non-Muslim Part 1 Invite, mankind, O Muhammad, to the way of your Lord i.e. Islam, with wisdom, i.e. with the divine inspiration and the Quran, and fair preaching. And argue with them in a way that is better. Quran 16, 125 Questions asked by non-Muslim and logical rational answers provided by Islam on the tongue of one of the Muslims in order to facilitate for those who have pure nature. Clean souls and rational, preponderant minds distinguishing between the correct and wrong. Good and bad and then make a clear choice among Islamic law and others such as atheism or other laws like Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Introduction All the praises and thanks be to Allah, the Lord of mankind, invisible beings and all that exists, and the Creator of the heavens, the earth, darkness, and light. I testify that there is no God or partner, but Allah alone. I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and messenger. Also, he is his friend and the beloved one among his creatures. He is the last prophet and messenger. His Lord sent him with the bright and brilliant light and he fulfilled the promise and delivered the message and advised the nation. Allah wiped away the sadness and darkness through him and he struggled in his way until he left this life. O God, grant blessings and peace to your servant and the seal of your prophets and messengers, Muhammad. Among the previous and the coming generations and those in the highest ranks till the day of judgment. May Allah be pleased with his kind and clean family, his esteemed companions who helped him, and those who were guided by his guidance including those who followed his teachings. And his impact until the day of Resurrection. After that, verily, whoever contemplates the teachings of Islam, its message and call will know the full compatibility and harmony of what Islam has come with. They are not against the pure nature, the meditation of clean souls, and the aspiration of right minds. It will be clear through the questions asked by one of non-Muslims and the logical and rational answers provided by Islam on the tongue of a Muslim in order to facilitate for those who have pure nature, clean souls and rational, preponderant minds distinguishing between the correct and wrong, good and bad and then make a clear choice among Islamic law and others such as atheism or other laws like Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. God, Allah, has granted man the grace of brain to think, contemplate, and reach the simple Sample answer that does not deviate from a pure sane instinct without the slightest intransigence or fatigue of thought and then forsake any other answers that do not rise to be accepted by the explicit mind. Therefore, man must use his brain which the Almighty God has granted him to reach a logical and rational answer, which will be the reason for his choice of a belief that he will live on, and which his Lord will hold him accountable for because of choosing it on the day that he will meet him. First of all, we call on everyone either Muslims or others such as Christians, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists or atheists to be stripped of whim, nerves, and lusts when choosing among the religion of Islam and other religions. Likewise, they should know that the truth that is clear to them is evidence against them in front of the Almighty Allah. Hence, they should stand with themselves in a sincere pause to get a reward from Allah while seeking the truth before a day comes when there is no benefit for money or sons except for those who came to Allah with a sound heart. We beg Allah, God, the great Lord of the throne to guide all of us to the clear truth, put it in our chests, and help us to walk on his path until we meet him. Allah is the guardian and powerful on it. Question 1, Non-Muslim, you may see what the Western media is working on by spreading and attaching various forms of extremism and terrorism to Islam and Muslims. What is your comment on that? Answer 1. Muslim, Islam is surely far from any form of extremism and terrorism and it is innocent of any act contrary to its teachings, even if it was done by those who allegedly claim to belong to Islam. Also, it is sufficient for you to know that the word Islam itself refers to, peace, security, and reassurance. The word Islam is derived from the verb to save from, which is also derived from the word, peace, which means, security, safety and reassurance. Therefore, Islam is the religion of peace that can accommodate everyone to let all of them under its umbrella enjoy peace, security, safety without injustice, unfairness and tyranny. The Almighty Allah said, if anyone killed a person neither in retaliation of murder nor to spread mischief in the land, it would be as if he killed all mankind. Quran 5, 32 By Islam, man enjoys the inner psychological peace, which is true peace. He will become safe because of his good belief for the Almighty Allah and will relieve his heart and use his body according to the light of instructions and sublime teachings of Islam. Question 2, Non-Muslim, So, what is the meaning of Islam? 
Answer 2. Muslim. Islam means complete surrender and submission by the brain, heart, soul, and body to the Almighty Allah and to comply with His orders. The servant of Allah should comply with his mind. He should believe in the existence of Allah, God, who created him. He ought to believe in his oneness, great power, and uniqueness and divinity. He must not worship any partner with him. He must not believe in his God and his Creator except what befits his greatness. He should believe that he is great and magnificent without the slightest deformation, reducing or decrease. He has to comply with his heart and soul by loving his great God, glorifying him and giving esteem appreciation for him. He has to obey with his body, by being obedient to the orders of his God and abandoning prohibitions. Such compliance should be because of love for his God and Creator to seek his satisfaction and hope in getting his paradise, including a great permanent stay in it and for fear of his wrath with the hope of surviving his fire including its severe pain. Question 3, Non-Muslim, and to what does Islam call? Answer 3, Muslim Islam has brought the pure belief that enlightened minds and guided them to know their Creator with the clear knowledge that befits his majesty and greatness. It calls for all that can be compatible with the pure instinct, spirit and the right mind. It calls for pure belief without the slightest impurities or disturbances that scatter the mind and prevent it from understanding and acceptance. Moreover, it calls for the pure belief accepted by the rational mind without oppression or forcing it to impose a certain perception on it, which it cannot accept, so it calls for belief in the existence of God, exalted, and blessed, the oneness of His divinity and belief in the great qualities and fluency of His ability. Also, it calls for purifying Him from imperfections, defects, and all that do not befit Him. Belief in the angels as one of the great creatures of Allah. He created them to worship and obey Him and to implement His orders, so they do not disobey Him. He did not give them the freedom of choosing obedience or disobedience. There is among these angels someone entrusted with a revelation i.e. someone that is in charge of receiving the assignments, orders, prohibitions, directives, and teachings from Allah and delivering them to those who have been chosen by him among human beings to be his prophets and messengers. They will be informed of what is revealed to them through what they receive from the angels to follow them. Belief in the heavenly books which includes the teachings given to the entrusted angel Gabriel, peace be upon him. Belief and respecting the prophets of Allah and his messengers who are chosen by God to deliver his call and message and to introduce him to people. In addition, to call them to believe in him and the oneness of his divinity and direct them to worship him in the way he wanted from them by implementing his teachings and orders, as required by his perfection. Belief in the last day the day when people will be resurrected after their death and Allah will ask them about their beliefs and their actions and hold them accountable for them. Those who do the work of an atom of good will find its reward and those who do an atom of evil will be held accountable. Belief in destiny either good or bad, that is to say, everything that happens in this universe and what occur to man either good or evil, happiness and pain, wealth and poverty, health and sickness and so forth. They are all prior destinies from God according to the perfection of His wisdom with His will and His full knowledge. He is all-knowing and expert. It calls for the guiding worship that can purify the human soul from vices, maliciousness and bad morals. It also guides it to transcend and rise to the highest morals and the highest levels of charity. It calls for strong legislation, prudent transactions and lofty teachings which can make the lives of all human beings be upright. It calls for knowledge, learning and the advancement of humanity in all areas of life. It calls for all good and to every way that leads to righteousness and warns against all evil and every way that leads to it. It calls for justice, charity and tying the relationship between the families and warns against injustice, abominations, and evil. It calls for honoring the human and preserving his life. It calls for honoring a woman at all stages of her life from birth and childhood, as a child and a little girl until she grows up and becomes a bride and through her marriage, as a wife, and her motherhood, as a mother and grandmother. It calls attention to raising children and having compassion and mercy for them. It calls attention to taking care of the youth. It calls for compassion and mercy for other creatures such as animals, birds, trees, plants and so forth. It calls for the use of wisdom. Good advice and rational logical dialogue with non-Muslims to let them believe in the Almighty Creator and in the oneness of His divinity and not to worship other than Him. It calls for good treatment for Muslims and non-Muslims. It calls for unity, solidarity, harmony, affection, and compassion. It calls for tolerance in wars. The wars of Muslims were against their enemies either to repel their aggression or to defend their religion Islam. 
sometimes, it is to secure the Islamic cause or against those who distort the image of Islam and falsify the truth or those who impede the message of Islam and its teachings. However, Islam has forbidden Muslims in their wars from treachery, betrayal, the killing of children, women, the elderly, non-combatants, including those who surrendered and those who do not bear arms, who do not fight Muslims. Furthermore, it is against the destruction of homes, trees, cities and any form of corrupting in the land. Therefore, Islam is based on compassion and tolerance, and that is why we see justice in dealings and humanity during combat. It calls for the good treatment of prisoners of war. It calls for peace, its components and the introduction of its causes including the fulfillment of covenants and charters and it is against extremism and terrorism. Question 4, Non-Muslim, Why Does Islam Call for Belief in the Existence of God Allah? Answer 4, Muslim, This is because the belief in the existence of the Almighty Allah has been proved by all the mental, innate, sensory legitimacy and other evidence including newly discovered scientific proofs which indicate the existence of this creator God, and left no room for a sane person to deny his existence. No one can deny the existence of God except by arrogance and whims because no sane person that can claim that this universe was created by coincidence or without a creator because this is forbidden. By the Agreement of the Wise. Fiki Badat by Sheikh Ibn Huthayman. I will briefly mention the evidence of the existence of this Creator God. First, mental evidence. We see this universe, its existence and what happens in it, which cannot be made by any creature, such as the existence of this universe, the heavens, the earth, its stars, mountains, rivers, trees, animals and speaking creatures like the human and so on. The question is how did this presence happen? A. Did this happen by chance? B. Did this happen without a Creator? C. Did this universe create itself? These are three possibilities, all of which are invalid, and there is only the fourth possibility, which we have not mentioned yet, which is the truth. The fact that it was created by chance is denied by the brain in reality because such great creatures cannot be created by a coincidence, every trace must be traceable. These great creatures in this wonderful and harmonious system that do not contradict or collide cannot be a coincidence because whatever happens by concurrences will be irregular. After all, it is all a coincidence. As for creating themselves, it is apparent and known that it is impossible because this being was nothing before and there is no anything that can create itself. Concerning the issue that it was found without a creator, it also means that it was found by chance, and this, as before, is impossible. The fourth saying, it remains to say the truth that this creature was innovated by the Almighty God who said, were they created by nothing, or were they themselves the creators? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Nay, but they have no firm belief. Quran 52, 35-36 So this universe mentally indicated the existence of Allah. Jurisprudence of worship by Ibn Uthaymin. Second, as for the instinct evidence. The indication of instinct is clear to the extent that it does not need evidence because the human according to his nature believes in his Lord. That is why if any fatal happened to any person in the world, he would suddenly say on his tongue without feeling, O God, or Lord or something like that, which indicates that the instinct was created to believe in the existence of God. Jurisprudence of worship by Ibn Uthaymin. The Al-Quran has drawn our attention to this innate confession, where the Almighty said in the questionnaire report, Is not he, better than your gods, who responds to the distressed one, when he calls him? Quran 2762. Therefore, the man and his creation on this image with his instinct indicate the belief in his creator and the uniqueness of his divinity and it is proof and evidence of the existence of this God, the creator the wise and his unlimited power. It is in the instinct of every being what attracts and leads him to identify his almighty God the creator and the wise and what also connects him with him. Also, it always lets him turn to him whenever he needs it. The issue of divinity between religion and philosophy by Dr. Muhammad al-Sayed al-Jaland. Third, sensual evidence. Human instinct and nature recognize the existence of the highest God by making man always turn during his supplication to his God and Creator. We often hear, with certainty without any doubt, about the acceptance of Allah to the prayers of his righteous believers, especially the prophets and messengers. Also, we often see with our eyes evidence of Almighty's response to our supplication and our issue. How many people have called him with his name and then his prayer was immediately accepted? Jurisprudence of Worship by Sheikh Ibn Uthaymin. 
There is no doubt that the one who created man on this way in terms of the inclination of his instinct and nature to believe in him and in his oneness and always resort to him in supplication and request is a truthful witness and evidence of his existence, wisdom, and unlimited power.